Russia, previously the Soviet Union, is one of the strongest aerospace powers in the world. They and the U.S. have always created fierce competition since the early days of the aerospace industry. One of their trump cards in this competition is the RD-180 engine. Indeed, the RD-180 shocked the aerospace industry after it was created, becoming the most powerful engine after the era of the F-1 engine even causing their competitor as well as a leading superpower like the U.S. to depend on it for a long time. With the RD-180, the Russians confidently declared that they owned the best engine in the world. But everything changed when Elon Musk and the Raptor engine appeared. Besides helping the U.S. end its dependence on Russia with the Raptor engine, SpaceX has ended the dominance of the RD-180. It can be said that it knocked out the greatest pride of the Russians and once again regained the title of the King of Engines back to the U.S.E. So, how SpaceX Raptor crushed Russia's best rocket engine? Stay tuned as we dive and more in this episode of Alpha Tech. The feat of sending humans to the moon helped the U.S. directly defeat its rival, the Soviet Union, in the space race. After continuing the legacy of the Soviet Union, Russia's primary goal is to create something that can beat the U.S. to take the lead in the aerospace industry. That is the reason why RD-180 was created. The RD-180 is an engine developed from the ERD-174 chamber engine used for the Soviet Union's Energia rocket. A special feature of this engine is its dual combustion chamber and dual nozzles, a design we rarely see in the current generation of engines. One special characteristic of the ERD-180 at that time was the use of oxygen in the fuel combustion process. Oxygen-rich engines tend to burn cleaner, more easily, and increase combustion chamber pressure, thereby increasing performance. That was its superior advantage compared to other contemporary engines. With that strength, the ERD-180 has become the top choice of aerospace companies for their vehicles. A typical example is Atlas V of ULA. This rocket is still using the ERD-180 engine to date. One of the other factors that made the RD-180 famous is its tremendous thrust. An RD-180 engine would be able to produce 860,000 pounds of thrust at sea level and 930,000 pounds of thrust at vacuum. That thrust is considered the most powerful to date, if not including the previously retired F-1 engine. This means the RD-180 is also more powerful than one of the most powerful engines in the U.S. today, the Raptor 2, which is being created and used by SpaceX for their Starship rocket, has a thrust of 510,000 pounds at sea level and 570,000 pounds in vacuum. However, that is probably the only thing that Russians can mention every time they compare their engine with the Raptor. Because in other aspects, the RD-180 seems to be becoming outdated and much inferior to the Raptor. Despite having greater thrust, the RD-180's chamber pressure is now lower than the Raptor engine. Since an engine test in 2021, the Raptor engine reached a pressure of 268 bar, surpassing the record of 266 bar held by the RD-180 for nearly a decade. Immediately after that test, Elon Musk posted a tweet to mark this great achievement. To date, after many improvements, the Raptor 2 engine has reached a pressure of 300 bar. Even last May, SpaceX tested the new Raptor 3 engine with a pressure of up to 350 bar. One weakness of the ERD-180 engine is its mass. An RD-180 has a mass of 5,480 kg. Currently, the current Raptor 2 engine only has a mass of 1,600 kg. Even the next Raptor version, Raptor 3, only has a mass of 1,400 kg. A smaller mass will help optimize the payload for each mission, allowing vehicles to carry more payload. This is an important advantage because an extra kilogram of payload for cargo and crew will be extremely valuable for each mission. Regarding fuel, the ERD-180 currently uses a mixture of liquid oxygen fuel and RP-1 kerosene, a traditional fuel. Meanwhile, the Raptor engine revolutionized engine manufacturing with the use of a fuel that had never been flown before, liquid methane. The strength of methane is that it is easier to produce than RP-1. RP-1 is produced from high-quality oil, a relatively expensive raw material source. To create a fuel that can be used for engines, it must go through many distillation and filtration processes with complex chemical reactions. These processes take a lot of time and money as well as produce environmental pollutants. In contrast, creating methane is much easier 
mainly using simple chemical reactions involving water and carbon dioxide. This is a very important advantage for future missions. For example, the Starship will fly to Mars, where there will be a carbon dioxide rich atmosphere as well as groundwater on this planet's surface. Thanks to that, SpaceX can resupply fuel during each mission. That is obviously impossible with an engine that uses kerosene. We cannot produce kerosene on other planets without the necessary equipment. This will cause vehicles using the ERD-180 engine to have a limited working range compared to vehicles using methane like the Raptor. Also with methane, the Raptor engine will be more environmentally friendly than the ERD-180. Burning RP-1 fuel will cause coking and produce other byproducts like residues. This will cause the engine to clog and accumulate heat, causing the engine to overheat. In addition, its exhaust gas stream contains many environmental pollutants, such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, soot, nitrogen oxides, and sulfur compounds. Meanwhile, the methane burning process will be cleaner and only emit water, small amounts of nitrogen oxide, and carbon dioxide. Next, we will compare costs. Currently, the cost of a Raptor engine is about $1 million. It will even be about $250,000 when mass-produced with 3D printing technology. Meanwhile, the cost of the ERD-180 engine will be about $10 million. It is much less cost-effective than the Raptor engine. Besides being cheaper, Raptor engines can also be reused many times with little maintenance. It is designed to be reused up to 100 times, a crazy number. In contrast, RD-180 cannot be reused. Reusability is an important factor in today's rocket and engine production. The old design of the previous century and the inability to reuse will make the cost efficiency of the RD-180 not as good as the Raptor. Furthermore, we are witnessing the Raptor's insane production rate. As NASA's revelation, last October, SpaceX can now produce one Raptor every 24 hours. That's a miracle that no other past or present engine can do, including the RD-180. Recently, a photo was posted on X by the deputy administrator of NASA, Pamela Melroy. In this photo, she stood next to the Raptor HLS engines inside SpaceX's factory. It is estimated that there are about 400 engines in that factory. Evidence proves SpaceX's formidable engine production rate. Not only was defeated by the SpaceX Raptor in every aspect, but we also see that the future of the RD-180 does not seem positive either. The RD-180 is used mainly for the Atlas V. However, this rocket will be retired and replaced soon by Vulcan, a new rocket using BE-4 engines. If it no longer has a place in the U.S. looking back at its homeland, the RD-180 does not seem to have many opportunities to operate. Russia is still involved in a war with Ukraine, so the aerospace industry will remain stagnant for a long time. That means all playgrounds for the ERD-180 seem to be closing. An old generation engine like the ERD-180 no longer has a place in new age flights. On the contrary, the opportunities for Raptor are extremely potential and open. The present time is just the beginning phase of the Starship project. Along with this rocket, the Raptor engine will play an important role in the two most important missions of the next few decades, returning humans to the moon and colonizing Mars. We've seen the Raptor produced and tested more and more. Once Starship is operational, we will see these Raptor engines demonstrate their capabilities. Perhaps the glory days of the ERD-180 are over. This is the time for old Russian pride to step back to make way for the new age of engines. We do not deny that the ERD-180 used to be the strongest and it created big influences on the aerospace industry. But perhaps its reign has come to an end. A new era has opened, and it's for new generation engines like SpaceX's Raptor. With Raptor, SpaceX will regain the title of King of Engines for the U.S. after many decades, and its power will help the U.S. get new glory in the upcoming races. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.